So what we have here is a one of those L128 klystrons, and I'd like to describe basically how it was made and some of the design problems that we encountered. What a klystron is basically is an electron beam traversing a very large distance down a what we call a drift tube to an electrode up here, the collector. Now down at the bottom end is where everything starts, which is a, called the electron gun. It's way down at the bottom, you'll see a white ceramic insulator. That houses a hot cathode and some focusing electrodes, and the entire accelerating voltage for the electrons appears across that one insulator, in this case 230,000 volts. That very high voltage beam, now an electrostatic beam, is put through what we call a, a magnetic pole piece, an iron plate, and goes down a long drift tube and stays collimated by means of a large electromagnet, which is not shown here, it's been removed, that keeps the beam from spreading. Uh, and as it goes down the drift tube, it traverses some microwave resonant cavities. Here's the first one, the second one, and a third one, which is this complicated uh, structure here. In the first one, the electrons, which normally have the same velocity, all of them, uh, have their velocities modulated by the RF so that over time there are some fast ones and some slow ones, which as they drift to the center cavity, end up in bunches. Electrons faster than the average catch up with earlier ones and so forth. This middle resonator, which is not connected to any external drive system, remodulates the beam in a more intense fashion to further enhance this bunching so that electrons end up clumped in time, space one cycle time apart, and that is a necessary requirement to generate energy by having those electrons give up energy to an electric field, RF electric field, in an output gap, which is here, and the power is coupled out because of its high level via a waveguide. And one of the real development problems was to get the power to come out to air, or in, this, in our case, a gas-filled, high-pressure uh, gas-filled waveguide in a vacuum seal. And this is called the microwave window, which has some requirements on it that it be transparent to the microwave, be a good vacuum seal, and sustain a very high voltage uh, all the time. That was another significant development problem we had with uh, multipacting and other esoteric failure modes, which uh, were solved over some long period of time. I should say that this project I'm talking about began about 1950 and took five years to consummate in developing tubes that were deliverable for system use. Now the electron beam does not convert entirely to microwave energy. There is waste energy. Roughly 35 percent of the beam energy comes out as microwave energy. The other 65 percent is dissipated in an electrode up here called the collector and it is water-cooled and involves a fairly careful thermal design to avoid melting the parts because the electron beam as it comes into this structure doesn't spread uniformly over the whole surface area. Some of it is concentrated and we had to worry a lot about the thermal aspects of it. But with uh, a large amount of empirical design obtained over these three years or four, four years of effort, a tube was finally developed, which was the highest power radar tube at the time, and the system was successful. And it went on to uh, several other ramifications subsequently, but what was more needed at this time was a better understanding of the physics, the modeling of the interaction, the electron beam forces to get better control of the beam, and that's the subject of our next topic.